Hi everyone, Darren Hunter here. I am with Michael Sands uh, from Teams by Design, and this is the Unbusy Podcast Show. And today we want to do a deep dive into what an executive assistant can actually do for you. Michael, you've been traveling the world. Um, you've been over to the UK. You've been to New Zealand recently. Um, you're really rubbing shoulders with a lot of real estate bosses out there. What's the word on the street around the usefulness of, of having an executive assistant and not so much based in the office, but based remotely? What's been the feedback? What's been the need? What are you seeing going on out there? I guess the main consistent word that we hear all the time is time. Business owners don't have enough time. We talk to them about, you know, coaching and growth and doing things extra for their business, but they keep saying, Michael, I just don't have the time. I'm just so busy at work and I'm helping my team grow. I'm putting out fires. We are just not in a position to even bring on any more staff. And then I go back to them and say, well, you know, you're at a capacity, but you need to grow because you're selling down 10, 20, 30% of your rent roll every year. What are you doing to solve that problem? And they just don't have time. And Darren, we see this in America. We see it in the UK. We see it in New Zealand, all through Australia. It's the same background definition of time. I don't have enough. Yeah. So, okay. So it's a time issue okay this whole beast is is time all right and, and we're going to focus on that everyone that that's going to be the the theme of this it's it's about getting back your life and getting back your time michael why aren't then people simply just employing an assistant in the office to help them what 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 why why are they still struggling if they identify that time is a real issue what what are the the problems that prevent that Firstly, I think that a lot of people don't know what to do with extra time anyway. And a lot of people, they're busy being busy and they fill their day out with solving problems that they don't need to solve. Uh, we did a post on Facebook probably about um, eight weeks ago, Darren, and it was if you had 10 extra hours in your week, what would you do? And there are people on there saying, oh, I'm going to go on a holiday or um, I'm going to do more admin work or I wouldn't even know what to do with that amount of time because I don't even have that much time left. And these are business owners that are just, they're in this negative mindset. But Darren, there are ways that you can kind of harness time. I mean, you're the expert on time management, but you know every trick in the book on how an individual like myself, for example, can better use my time. But as a business owner and a real estate business owner, I still only have X amount of hours in the week. So it doesn't matter like Darren, how good your training is to me on how I should manage my time better, I'm still at a capacity. And I'm a business owner for a reason because I want to grow something and I want to have a valuable asset and I want to have a lifestyle. I don't want to be chained to a job because that's, I bring staff in to help build the business and do tasks that I don't want to work on because I want to focus on income producing and having a lifestyle. And we see so many business owners out there that go into business with that same mindset I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to have a lifestyle. I'm going to be able to go and hang with friends on the weekend and family and so on. But they end up creating themselves a job and it comes back to time. They are at a capacity. So let's talk about what life looks like when we do have time. As a business owner, as an entrepreneur, what are the sort of things that we know we could be doing and what we should be doing and what we'd like to be doing what are the what are the high value tasks michael of a real estate business owner when they've been unchained from the balling chain and unleashed what does that look like what we typically see with business owners that have more time uh, is a higher engagement with their audience like with their clients uh, with new prospects they're far more hyper visible in their marketplace they have more time to focus on the real high level tasks or so engaging with current clients, finding new clients. Uh, they really get to focus on those high income um, activities, which they couldn't do before. Before they were typically helping out their team members with the work that they're doing. And let's say Darren, you know, we worked out 
average cost per hour for a team member is about $50 um, plus. If you're a business owner and you're helping your property manager with, with tasks, you're working for free, right? Your time, you're not making any money there at all. So the high level things are engage, re-engaging with your current client, being more hyper visible, focusing on income producing tasks, and you can go and work on special projects. So Darren, we had the real estate business, we did rentals and we did investment sales. By having that extra time, I was able to go out and find new projects to sell to my database, which meant that I could generate a higher revenue um, coming into the business as opposed to being stuck at the debt. I, I also, going back to, for example, with our Top Growth Academy at IGT, we're going through the 12 different strategies that you can be doing to grow your business. So, for example, um, setting up key relationships with strategic alliances and referral partners. So uh, setting up relationships for referrals with accountants and mortgage brokers and financial planners and all of those people that are involved and connect with property investors. Well, that's a high level task that takes time and you've got to have time to be able to do that. And then once you've got those relationships set up, it's doing investor education events and they require high level time to organize. They're not hard to do. We teach that, but no one's got time. What about running a podcast show? That's a high level task but people have got no time. We've got, um, what about Google reviews? Oh my goodness me, Michael, Martina Berry in, in Perth, who's got over nearly 700 reviews and she's got several hundred more than her next competitor that's got reviews. She's getting several hundred leads a month for sales and property management, but to put that strategy in place that we teach, no one's got time. Um, mm. we can go on and on and on and on. And everyone, I want you to understand, and I'm hoping you're resonating with what we're saying. There's so much more you can be doing to change your world and change your business if you had the time. So through this podcast, we want to highlight to you the low-level tasks that you should not be doing that are costing you much more than what you think. You could easily give to another person who's just sitting there in the background supporting you, doing your work, um, doing doing the tasks that you're currently carrying that you shouldn't be doing that are costing you all of that big activity that you're too busy to do. So, Michael, what I want to do now, let's start going through the, the, the activities that a typical business owner is doing and what everyone, what we need to understand, that these are your activities you're doing right now, but there's two sides to it. There's a low-level activity that could be given to an executive assistant and there's the high-end stuff that only you could do, but there's two sides to it. So as we're going through these tasks, we're going to help you divide them into two, so the low-end stuff that could be done by an ex executive assistant and the high-end stuff that is high skill, that's your job. So Michael, the first one we got here is email management. Let's talk about the two sides to that, the low-level stuff and the high level stuff what's what's the low level stuff with typical email management email management um is relatively simple to have someone help you with that i get a lot of spam emails i get a lot of you know just general basic question emails i get emails that aren't really relevant to me they might be more relevant to you having someone just kind of peruse my emails on a triage level and just make sure that any of the waste you know spammy type emails are deleted anything that's like relevant to somebody else is forwarded to them and assigned to them. Uh, and anything that is of a high priority could be new business, um, you know, the high income producing uh, emails, that gets allocated to me. So if I'm getting 10 emails a day and two of them are only relevant to me, then I'm only spending time on those two emails. The other eight emails have been removed, discarded, assigned to somebody else. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. I know with, with, with myself and with Bev, my EA, um, the work that I, I just, the amount of time that I can spend now on the projects for our business and all the high level stuff, because I've got Bev um, doing all my low level stuff, just, you know, I, I can watch my email inbox fill up with crap. And one of the exercises I've been doing recently is, um, is assigning all of the emails that I know I'm not going to read or I don't need anymore. And I'm just simply moving them to an unsubscribe box. And Beverly does the rest of the work in unsubscribing everyone. So bit by bit by bit, 
my list that's dropping, my raw emails that are dropping into my inbox every day is getting lower and lower and lower um, to the more high value emails because of the work that she's doing there. But I'm just too busy, um, you know, to do that otherwise. Mm. But we get flooded with so many wasted emails there and every and business owners in real estate get flooded with new projects that are coming on board. You get flooded with different CRMs and different projects. And it's just, it's a, it's a waste of time to really stop and read them when you don't need them. Having someone to triage it saves hours every day. And I mean, you know, we, we just did a tour of New Zealand recently. And one of the things that we were talking about with a lot of the business owners there and challenging them is that they do their work within eight hours of the day, but really they could probably do what they're doing within four hours of the day as it is. And then we say to them, what would you be doing if you had an extra four hours every day to build your business? So when you think about it, if you've got an executive assistant that starts going through your emails and all these other things that we're going to be going through, you're going to be a new person. You need to make sure you replace the time with income producing growth focused tasks. Though. As I said, it's been a real game changer for me. And I'm sorry, everyone, I'm looking a little bit distracted, but I'm actually bringing Bev into the room right now. Um, I've been sending out messages and Bev sometimes works out that she's being recorded or not. Hopefully she hasn't picked it up. As soon as she sees Michael, she knows she's being recorded. So anyway, this is Bev. Bev has just been such a game changer for me. Um, uh, I'm getting so much done with my projects. Um, and let's just see, I'm just going to ask Bev around email management and what she does to keep me unbusy. So let's bring her in. And Bev is amazing. She is, absolutely. Hi, Bev. How you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> She's already worked it out. Now, Bev, you were, you were suffering with a cold yesterday, so I hope, I hope you're better. Is, is you, you're feeling better today? Well, it's still the same. Um, I felt worse actually last night, but yeah. Yeah. So I'm just sharing with everyone and, and we, we're, we're in this podcast show, Bev, we're talking about um, all the big tasks that we do as real estate bosses and bosses and stuff and how executive assistants help us carry with the low level stuff. So we're talking about email management. What do you do on a daily basis with my emails to keep that very busy email inbox sorted. So I'm only dealing with the stuff that I need to deal with. Just give us a little bit of a rundown of what you do. What's your typical tasks on a daily basis around that? Well, um, in the morning when I first log in, it's um, your emails that I take care of first. Um, I just want that to be out of the way. And so I take a look at everything. Um, if it's not important, mostly what you have are like marketing emails from other people. And so I just, um, I've already created labels on the left-hand side. And so I just put them in their correct labels. And then um, if it's something that, um, that you have to look at, then I put them in the start emails and I let you know that they're there. Now, there are some emails that you just reply to, right? And you don't even tell me about them, correct? Yes. Uh, well, actually, I tell you because some, uh, in the beginning, we were replying to the same emails <laughs> because we didn't know that we were, I was already replying to it and then you replied to it. And um, so now before I reply to anything that I can reply to, I let you know that I'll be replying to that person. Yeah. Yeah, and there's times with our chat because we 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 also keep in touch on Google Chat, right? So mm -hmm. that that's our live chat. We can send stuff just like everyone, just like it's it's like Facebook Messenger or SMS text. You know, workplace chat is it's actually the business side of um, Messenger. It's actually the the Facebook paid business side. Um, but Bev, we uh, and of course Google Chat. You you bring you actually ask me a question, Darren. I've got this email here. How do I reply to this person? You give me a screenshot of the email in the chat. So right there, I can open it up and I can make a quick decision and give you instructions or, or whatever and go from there. I guess you, you you find that useful. Yes, yes. Because, well, yeah, correct. And also, I, I just don't take care of your emails. I also take care of mine and also um, office and also the newsletter inbox. So, yeah, a lot of emails to take care of. 
I know there's a lot of stuff that goes on and I know that you very competently handle things and I don't even have to worry about it, which is wonderful. And Bev actually gives us a report at the end of the day as well, uh, a detailed report on all the little nuts and bolts so you can actually see, you know, what's actually gone on if you want to take a deep dive and take a real look at it. So thank you so much, Bev. You've been a real help and really appreciate all that you do and, and thank you for your time. You're welcome. See ya. Right, see you later. Bye. Bye. So you can see there, Bev, Bev is so crucial to what I do. There's no way that I would be able to write up all of the marketing, to do all those emails that I do, the high level stuff, writing up all the descriptions for the academies that we're about to release with rent roll growth training and time management training and all the high level stuff that other people can't do if I'm caught in the weeds, everybody. Really, really important. Michael, let's move on. The next thing on your list is um, dealing with phone calls. So let's talk about what are the typical phone calls that a boss deals with has to deal with but what's the low level side of it and the high level side of it so we can see both sides yeah i guess it depends on too like which level the business owner is at like if they're a solo operator um or they've got a team underneath them like we're with a reception and so on um but for, for us and especially in real estate i made sure that like my um, ea handled every single tenant inquiry communication that came into the office that they were the first point of call for every single tenant um, issue question everything um, that included maintenance and, and everything there too every phone call went through them so the only phone calls that I dealt with were the owner calls and more so um, the new business owner calls because I had a property manager who dealt with anything such as following up on you know, the, the lease or the property or giving notices, things like that. The property manager handled that. For me, the only type of calls that I handled from it was really the business. Um, there were sometimes complaints um, from tenants and there were some higher escalations that I had to deal with, you know, some things like could be around maintenance or a flooding or a property burning down, things like that, that I, I was the best person in the business to kind of deal with. Well, I, thought, I assumed I was the best person in the business to deal with it. Maybe I wasn't. Um, but I didn't deal with anything low, le low level. Mm. Everything was filtered through the, through the EA first. Yeah. And, and you just heard how confident Bev Beverly is with her English skills. Now, Beverly's based in Manila, so she works remotely. Um, she's always there managing things and carrying things for us because everything's through internet. Um, and, uh, it, it, you know, it, if you are in a situation where you're getting calls come in, why do you have to take them? You could, your executive assistant could pick it up, could screen the calls. Um, and if it's an important one, they can book you, that person into your diary. So all you have to worry about is at this time, I've got to click on that Zoom link. Um, and all of the low level work has been done for you. So you don't have to spend any time um, on that phone call until you're in that appointment, but all the other work to bring them and shepherd them into that appointment has been done. How much time saving for that would be for you if you didn't have to worry about taking um, phone calls and only dealing with the most important things. But it's also too, Darren. So even where there are those calls that are potential escalation like that you would have to deal with, um, and using Bev as an example, I am confident in Bev's ability to kind of say, hey, Bev, this is what I would say. Do you mind giving them a call back and, and saying A, B, C, D? Because it's not really critical for me to kind of get on, on the call. And at the end of the day, the person that is calling you, they want a high value exchange. So they're calling you with a question. They want something from you. And if they're getting that at a high level value, they're satisfied. It's when people are not getting the outcome in the call that they want to, being heard, listened to, that a, a negative escalation takes place. Having someone like Bev in place there who is confident on the phone and can think laterally and can problem solve and handle 80, I mean, Bev could handle 90 plus percent of the calls that would come through of all inquiries, right? Um, then you're only dealing, I mean, Darren, you only deal with the high level stuff. Like you don't deal with anything low level hanging at all, like at all. Uh, we've got full trust in Bev because she's so good. Now, again, everybody, these aren't virtual assistants. These are next level up. These are 
Um, you know, virtual assistants are very, very useful in the business. And of course, if you're wanting a virtual assistant, speak with Michael. But we're talking next level. This is next base. These are people that are next level up, that are high using their initiative. They've got good English skills. They're very, very competent. And they are at the same level as you would probably have to pay someone in Australia to work in your office with a salary of eighty to $100,000. And, and then you've got desk costs as well with internet and insurance and all of those things that you've got with employing somebody, um, that this is the type of person that you can put on board, but only at a third of the cost. This is where we're going with this to make it possible that you can um, put on a person that's going to help you with all of this 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 stuff that just is like a balling chain around your leg and truly unbusy you. But Michael, let's move on. So booking in appointments and appointment management, let's now look at that from a, a, a real estate business owner's point of view or a, a team leader or something like that. What's the low level side of it that could be done by an EA and what's the high level side of it that can only be done by us? Yeah, and I think too, to touch on your comment before, like, what you would call a virtual assistant is someone that is doing the repetitious task over and over again. Um, and they don't have to think laterally or problem solve and over amount. Whereas an executive assistant, you have that full level of trust. They have the ability to think laterally and handle more high level tasks in line with you. Um, as far as um, like booking in appointments and, and so on, I love that there is someone there that can book in all the sales calls, um, all the sales appointments for me. Um, if there is somewhere that I have to be, they book it in. They've got total control of my um, diary, so they can see exactly what I've gone for the day. Uh, they know that if I'm at one location and I need to be at another location, not to double book me, um, you know, not saying if I finish something at 12 o'clock, I'm not going to be somewhere at 12.15, that's 45 minutes away, so they have so they look at that. Um, when Darren, when someone emails me and says, hey, Michael, can we have a catch up? I want to talk about bringing on, on an executive assistant that um, uh, they book it in. Darren, I don't even think about it. Like it's booked into my diary. I wake up and I've got appointments that are booked in already. Whereas before, I've got to take the call. I've got to go through yeah. my email, yeah. go through the diary. Yeah. Same for me. I, I just, we, we've got a shared diary at IGT. So we've got my diary in shared is the blue appointments, Dennis's is orange and Michael's yellow, and we can see each other's appointments. Um, and for me just to have an appointment drop into my diary, all the work's done, the chasing's been done, the, the, the phone call has been done to book them in, or the email ping pong has been done, that, oh, what time, what day are you going to be available this week? Oh, Wednesday next week, no problem. Now, now what time? Ping pong, ping pong, all that work's been done to finally confirm they're in my diary. And all I have to do is hit that Zoom link and I am there speaking to them. And all of that weeds work has been done for me that is so valuable because me doing that task just wears me down and costs me so much money because it's the things that I can't do in the high value stuff. I think too, like imagine you're a business owner and someone sends you an email inquiry. Hey, Darren, I'm looking to rent out my property. Can you let me know a bit about your business fees and charges and, and so on? The normal questions that are asked. And this comes to at 10 o'clock at night and you're asleep or family or what have you. Um, First thing in the morning, your executive sees that email and straight away sends them out information on the business. And they also say, hey, let me book in a time for you and Darren to catch up. I can do it this morning at 9.30 or whatever it is. They can even pick up the phone and say, yeah, hey, I'm, I'm Darren's executive assistant. I've seen your email. Let me book in a chat with you. I've already sent you out some information on the business and our services that we provide. Um, I understand you want to talk about things such as fees and further service. What time have you got this morning or today that we can have a catch up? Mm. Up and you've done nothing, mm. right? All you've done, Darren, is check in in the morning and see the diary, and you know you'll see the emails back and forth. But it's seamless, and I know there are there are programs out there that help with proposals and everything. But what they miss is that human connection, like they miss that human input, and people want to deal with people. So again, if you've got people trying to deal with you, calling you, emailing you, and you put them through a computerized funnel you're missing what the other agent is going to do, which is call them, speak to them, book them in. Now, everyone, did you, when you heard me speaking to Bev, did you hear that she understands not just the heartbeat of our business, but mine as well? She understands 
me. She understands my needs. She, she's, she's in sync with how I think. And she flows into that. So she's truly serving me and knowing what's most important to me. And then if, if something's out of sync, she's adjusting it. She's always adjusting things and keeping things organized in the background and doing things that I'm not even aware of and doing all the hard yards for me. So, um, Michael, I think what we'll do is we'll end this podcast here because there's a lot of information on here for people to digest. And we will continue this on in the next podcast with uh, a lot of other tasks that you are doing right now um, with parts of those tasks that you shouldn't be doing and getting out to an executive assistant so you can get your wings, you can be soaring in your business and doing all those high-end things that are growing your business and setting you free and doing what you intended in the first place, but now you've got stuck with doing like a ball and chain. And we want to unbusy you. That's what this podcast is all about. So Michael, um, what's a way that people can get in contact with you right now if they want to talk about executive assistance? Just go to teamsbydesign.com and uh, contact us and just say, hi, let's have a chat. You'll be able to book directly into my diary. We can catch up, go over your needs, your values, what you're looking to achieve, your outcome and so on. And you know, no obligation. We can just kind of see how you're operating at the moment. We can give you some advice and see how an executive assistant can work in your business. And everyone, um, for a list of 30 different things that a virtual assistant can do in your business as well to unbusy your team, just go to teamsbydesigntasks.com. That's teamsbydesigntasks.com. Of course, go to teamsbydesign.com um, to book in and speak with Michael. Um, but um, yeah, and also, Michael, your your diary link, everybody, just go to unbusychat.com. That will actually book you straight into Michael's diary, unbusychat.com. We've linked that up with uh, Michael's Calendly, and that will book you straight into his, his diary, so unbusychat.com. All right, um, thank you so much, Michael. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you in the next podcast. Bye.